Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Reverend Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We are privileged to have another opportunity to be at the feet of our Lord. Thank God you are here. And let's get into the scriptures. There's something very interesting about God. But the scripture says something in Genesis chapter number 8 and then verse 1. Genesis 8 and then verse 1. And the Lord remembered, and God remembered Noah, and every living thing, and of the of and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wing to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. Let's do. The fountains also of the deep, and the window windows of the heaven windows of heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon Mount Ararat. <clears throat> And the waters decreased continually until the tenth day in the tenth month, in the first day of the month, where the, st- the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass on the end of the forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him and to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the earth. Hmm. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her feet and she returned unto he turned him into the ark, and the waters were on the face of the earth, the whole earth. When he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in onto uh, him into the ark. Okay. Now you see something. The question is, can God forget anything? We said he's an omniscient God. The all-knowing God. But this time he's saying he remembered it. The issue is not about God forgetting because he cannot forget anything. It's impossible for him to get, forget. That is his nature. But it is about his timing and season. Hallelujah. Aha. Uh-huh. It is all about his timing and season. So when we say God remembered, it means his time has come For him to do what he wants to do. Not that he forgot anything. Amen. Let's take note of that. Very important. He sees everything. This is how Psalm 94 says. Psalm 94 and then verse number 9. Very interesting scripture. Psalm 94 verse 9. He that planted the ear. Shall he not hear? He that formed the eyes, shall he not see? Wow. Let's read the 10. He that chastised the, the heaven, shall he not correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall he not know? You see, when you read about this, God, this is God. Amen. The all-wise God, he knows everything. He knows when he wants to do it. 
He's not forgotten. He's waiting for his season and timing. And at the right time, he will do what is expected of him. That is who he is. He is God. Now, let's start, read a story about this man, the butler, the chief butler, who forgot Joseph. Let's get to Je Genesis 41. And let's start from the verse 9. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my force this day. Mm -hmm. Ten. Pharaoh was wrath with his servant and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dream a dream in one night. I and he, we dream each man according to his interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant of the captain of the guard. And we, we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each according to his dream, he interpreted. He did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted, so to us. So it was me he restored unto my office, and him he hung. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Joseph had been sold into slavery. He entered Potiphar's house. He became the chief steward in the house. Then the woman had a problem with him, and he was sent into prison. He came to prison, and God gave him favor with the chief prison officer. And now Joseph was with him, and then these things happened there. But remember, he said, I forgot my fully. I made a mistake. I did not remember this man who interpreted our dream for us. It is not he who forgot it. But the point is, God's time was not yet up. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So it was withheld from him. And Joseph must be there until he got to the age of 30. So Joseph stayed from Potiphar's house to the prison house, all of them 13 years. Why? He had a course to take. He needed to learn the language of the Egyptians. And then he also need to learn management and handling people. And he was, his own was more of practical, not theory. So he was there in Potiphar's house for some years. And then he came into the prison to do the management, handling other prisoners. God allowed all these things because of what he had for him ahead, that he would become and be the Prime Minister of Egypt. Amen. Why would things not happen as Joseph may wish? No. God knows what he is doing because it is God who gave the, the dream that his father and mother and all his brethren will come and bow to him. He knows what he, how to work all those things out. So the, those matters were in the hands of the Lord. But Joseph did one thing which was his own. It's very simple. He will not compromise on his values. He said, I cannot sin against God. That is it. This is a great sin. I cannot sin against God. Because doing Potiphar's house, by all means, was chasing this man. He wanted to sleep with him, have an affair with him. But Joseph said, I cannot do that great sin against God. The man was not there, but he said, I cannot do it against God. Well, because of those values, God respected this young man and kept him until his appointed time. So finally, he came out of prison by the order of Pharaoh, come. They called him out of the dungeon. That morning he wake up a prisoner. 
By the evening, he was the prime minister. Why? It is God who did those things. Amen. Are you with me? Okay. Now, let's move on. Mm. God will, is that God remember me? God remember me. Will God remember you? Yes, he wants to remember you. He's not forgotten. But he has time and season for everything. And the scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter number 6. Let's get to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews 6. Verse 9. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and think that accompany salvation though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to work, to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown toward the saints, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unrighteous to forget. God will not forget your labor of love, which you have shown to the saints. In his name, you have ministered to many, and God knows it. He's taking record of it. He is not unrighteous to forget it. Your labor of love. God knows it. Hallelujah. You see, Lord remember me. He'll remember you in your due season and in your due time and your timing. He will not forget your work. Because if he does that, it means he doesn't work, reward good works. He doesn't record, reward the righteous who are working hard in his house, who are giving their life of sacrifice. But he said, God is not unrighteous. It means God is righteous. He cannot do that. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? Hear me. It is important that you encourage yourself with these things. Because there are times you, you may be expecting things to work fast. But it seems like it's de delaying. But the scripture says, God is not unrighteous. You forget it. If we forget all your righteous work, it means he will also become unrighteous. But it is impossible for him to lie. He cannot do that. Hallelujah. So encourage yourself and be aware that God is not unrighteous to forget all your works of love and labor of love in which you have done in his name. No. God will not do that. Are you with me? Okay. So. <laughs> Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. At your due season and at the right timing, God will remember all your good works and all that I have done. Hallelujah. Mm. Then there was a young man who, who had been praying, and his prayer is very simple. Lord, remember me. Why? Let's get to Psalm number 119 and then verse 49. This scripture, you have to take it home. Please don't let this escape because you need to use it in your prayer. <laughs> oh, wow. He said, 119 and then verse number 49. 49. Hmm. Remember that word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Remember thy word unto who? Unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Thou hast given me a promise, Lord. And because of that, I have rested all my faith and my hope in it. So remember your promise. Your promise. Lord, do all. Remember thy word unto thy servant. It means you have also found one of the scriptures. Ah, it means you have found a promise which is meant for you. And then you are using it in your prayer. That is why I say you don't have to forget this word. 119 verse number 49. Remember that word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Thou hast caused me to hope because you make a promise unto me. You make a promise in your word. I have believed it. Praise the Lord. For instance, when you take tithing, and God said, bring me all the tithe into my storehouse and prove me 
says the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a, a blessing where you, have no, you will not have in, room enough to receive them. Why you take such a promise and you are giving your tithe? You can now quote to him, Lord, remember thy word to thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Thou have given me this promise and this covenant of tithing. I have believed it and have been practicing it. Remember it. Remember it. This is my time. This is my season. Remember it. You see, you know where you stand. You know what you have believed. And you know how to approach God. Because now he's saying, remember that word unto thy servant. Hallelujah. Let him know that he had made a promise and he cannot lie. And you have believed it. And so you expect all his promises to be fulfilled in your life. Amen. Lord, remember me. May he remember his covenant and his promises to you. All that he has said concerning you. And all that have, you that have been able to believe. Amen. This is a powerful passage of scripture. Take note of it and God will bless you. And then you sit when you are praying to him. Praise God. Remember thy word unto thy servant upon which thou have caused me to hope. Remember it, Lord. Remember it, Lord. Ha, hallelujah. When you are telling him all these things, he will say, oh, you wait. It's my, my season will come. My time will come. Because we say he's not forgotten it. It's all about all his seasons and his timing. Amen. Okay. Now, let's get to Exodus chapter number two and let's see how Israel prayed and how God answered their prayer. Exodus chapter number two, verse 23, 24. And it came to pass in the, in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of a bondage and they cried and their cry came unto the Lord by reason of the bondage. Uh -huh. And God heard a groaning and God remembered the covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and with Jacob. God remembered it. Hallelujah. Now he's saying, Lord, remember me. Huh? But this time they had opportunity to cry. Because remember they were slaves. So early in the morning, they would have to go for the hard labor. But when the king died, they were all crying and weeping in the morning. So they joined the, the chorus. But they did proper crying. They cried unto God to remember them. And remember his covenant. And God had the groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. The question is, had God forgotten his covenants with Isaac, Jacob, Isaac and Jacob? No, he had not forgotten. But there's something he was expecting from his people. That they will believe those covenants. And then they will come to a place in times of challenges, they turned their back from everything and cried to him and remind him of all those covenants. It's not that God has forgotten, but they have to play their roles. Hallelujah. When you read Isaiah 66 and verse 6, he said, Will a nation be born at once when Israel travailed? Or will a nation be born in a day? No. But when they travailed in prayer, when they got that opportunity, when the king died, and all of them were crying, they also used and see that opportunity to cry and to pray to the Almighty God to remember them and the covenant. And God remembered the covenant he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, the issue is that we also have challenges and many things that confront us. But most of the time we are Oh, God, be merciful to me. God, help me. But listen, we need to come to a time where we believe what God has said and now we need to prevail and travail in prayer. Hallelujah. And as we begin to do that, 
we remind God that we believe. Hallelujah. It is not that God is not able to do it. He's able to do it. But he, do we believe what he has said? Do we believe his covenant? That faith prayer and that travailing prayer is an evidence of their faith in their God. And once they did that, they activate the powers of God. And the might and the hand of God move upon them. And God now intervened. That was the time God called Moses. And the beginning of all the beginnings of their deliverance. They came out of Egypt by the mighty hand. He said, you will not come empty. They came not empty handed. They came by the might of God and the power of God. They came and they saw the cloud or pillar. By day and the, the cloud of fire by night. It just led them. They saw it. And God led them. Hallelujah. They deserved, God divided the Red Sea. They went on dry ground. They came in there. And when the Egyptians attempted to pass through the Red Sea, they were all swallowed up. The, the sea just took them away. And they all died. You see, this is God. But these are some of his, the things he want to men to believe and cooperate with him. Hallelujah. Good. Now let's move on. So it's all about his time and his <laughs> God's time and due season. Amen. Okay. Let's get to Psalm 102 and then verse number 13. Psalm 102 and then verse number 13. Thou shalt rise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Ah, time to favor her. The time to favor her. And the set time is what? Come. You see, so I'm saying about, it's all about what? God's season and his time. And not that you have forgotten them. But he said, Thou shalt rise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, the time, yea, the set time is come. Okay? So when this set time and season has come, God now begins to move and begin to help his people and deliver them. Yes, this is a mighty God. When he stretched forth his son, no man can put it down. Mm. God remember me. God remember me. Hallelujah. God can remember you, but the aspect of my human life, God will not want to remember. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. When you read Isaiah 43 and 25, God will not want to remember our sins. I, even I, I am he that blotted out our transgressions and for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. You see, as for our sin, the blood of Jesus has washed them away. And God said he doesn't want to remember it. So the things he's going to remember, he doesn't want to remember our sin. Once you repent and turn your heart from sin and come to the Lord, the blood of Jesus, God's son, will cleanse you from sin and he will not remember it. Because if he is to keep remembrance of our sin, then we cannot make heaven. Hallelujah. Let's get to Psalm 103 and then verse number 12. Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so, so far have I removed thy transgression from us. He had removed our transgressions and he doesn't want to remember. Amen. Yes. Okay. So remember me. He wants to re remember your works you have done and how you minister to the saints. But he doesn't want to remember all your things and all the first things, the, the, the mess we cause. No, he doesn't want to do that. Hallelujah. That shows how gracious he is and merciful he is that he forgive and forget. He forgive and cleanse it and wipe it away. 
Even when you remember him, he said, well, I don't remember them. Hallelujah. When Satan will stand and try to accuse us, the blood of Jesus goes on. The Lord will just raise his hand and say, it is this, because of this I died. Hallelujah. Ah, you want to remember the Lord, you want to remind the Lord of all my sins and all my wrongs. Jesus will only lift his, his right hand and say, look at my print. I died for them because of this. Their sins are removed and far from them. And that is why the scripture says, and we overcame him by the blood of a lamb. Ah, and by the word of our testimony, we overcame him because we declared to him what God has said about us. We declared to him what he had done for us. And we believed that. So he had no place to stand and accuse us. Hallelujah. He may attempt to accuse us, but he may do all those things, but you come to not no avail. Why? The blood of Jesus, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. Our sins have been removed and washed and cleansed and purged. And we have been accepted as children of God without any guilt and condemnation. Praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Mm. Good. We thank God for all that he had done for us. Mm. And then one of the prayers I want you to pray is this. Lord, remember me and give me a measure of your spirit. John 3.34. John 3.24. Our time is running fast, so just write that down. Let's move on. <laughs> Good. Lord, remember that covenant. Before someone was born, his life had been cut out for him. Like Jesus. It was there. Pa by the faith of the mother who trusted in the Lord and made that covenant with God. It's there. You will be a priest unto the Lord. And this has then been done. Brother, sister, hear me. I want you to see that and know that those things are possible. Hallelujah. The desires of your heart can be attained by faith and by the promise and the vows you made before God, which you mean it from your heart. And God will honor your faith. And then, oh, come on. At a point of time, Anna fulfilled her word. He brought the child to the house of God and sent it to Eli. And he stayed in the temple of God and served God. Now, let's take this last scripture and then we pray. Psalm 105 and then verse number 19. This on Joseph. Psalm 105 and then verse number 19. Until the time his word came, the word, the word of the Lord tried him. Remember that God has spoken to him and given him a word. But until that time that all those things will be fulfilled, the word of the Lord tried him. So for 13 years, slavery. Then from there, prime minister. After many years, now his brethren and all those things will come and bowed to him, and then he brought them to Gershon. You see, those, that was the word of the Lord unto him. But until those time came, the word of the Lord tried him. It means he went through trial and difficulty while waiting. Brother, sister, you may be going through a season you may not understand at all, but if God has given you a promise and a word, hold on. Faithful is he that promise who will also perform. His word will come to pass. He will not lie. He is no man to lie. What he has said, he will make it good. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on dearly until the time the word of the Lord came. God is not man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not make it good? Or shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he make it good? You see, this is the word of the Lord. When it comes, it means we need to believe and hold on. We may go through challenges, but God is faithful. He will bring it to pass. He will fulfill it in this season, and his name will be glorified. We also have a testimony that God has done this in our life. Amen. 
Shall we pray? God will remember you. I want you to remember this. This is your prayer. God remember me. God remember me. I don't know what is on your heart this moment. But one thing I know that he will not forget you. It's only about his season and timing. But you need to hold on believing and trusting him. All the promises he has made, use it as your prayer point and remind him that Lord, thou has given me this promise and thou has caused me to hope. I have believed it because thou said it. And I believe it because you will not lie to me. And as you give your tithe, as you give your prayer, as you give your promise, and all that he has said, as you begin to do it, you will see the hand of God move in a supernatural way. It will shock and surprise you. Can God do that? He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. May your God manifest himself as faithful as he has promised in scripture. May your God show himself strong in your seasons and in his timing. Whatever he had declared concerning you, let it come to pass. And may you have a testimony among your peers. May your song be sung. And may people say, God has blessed with him. God has been with him. May you be that brother who is blessed. May you be that sister who has got the favor of the Lord. Yes, the time to favor you has come. In your times of favor and in the times of mercies of God, God will not forget you. Remember that King Ahasra could not sleep because somebody must be blessed the next morning. Hallelujah. Mordecai must be promoted. So the king could not sleep that night. When your season and your time come, may God remember you. Yes, he will remember you at your seasons and in your timing. And no man can stop his end. He is God who reigns in the affairs of men. The Almighty, whose power can prevail against any situation. Let him be God over your life. Let him be God over every challenge. And arise above every fear and doubt. May his name be glorified. May his testimony manifest in your life. You will stand and bear testimony that the Lord is good. Your time for favor has come. And in these times of favor, may God spirit brood over your life and cause you to receive the things he has destined for you. And let the name of the Lord be praised. You have testimony because God is with you. May his name be praised forever. Now you want to give your life to Jesus, please. Let's pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Be merciful to me and save my life. Lord, may your favor come over me. Receive me into your family. Make me a child of God. Let your blood cleanse me and make me whole. I bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Today I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. In your time of favor, may you see God's visitation and grace come over you. And may you say, the Lord has been good to me. And may he give you a testimony. And may you rejoice and share with others to bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russell Kovner on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-614965. Thank you and God bless you. I will